Love is dead on Love is Blind season two, and we respect that. Love is Blind season one did not convince me that love is indeed blind. It did, however, inspire some sappy, feel-good optimism for its thesis that emotional connection is a better basis for romantic partnerships. But then season two of the Netflix hit came in like a wrecking ball, revealing how far from being blind, love honestly needs to see a therapist before considering tying any knots. And for that public service alone, we consider this hot mess nothing short of required viewing. Watching the car crash that was all five of season two's relationships often felt more like anti-heterosexual marriage propaganda than a reality TV dating show. In theory, the show's social experiment claims to test whether bonds made sight unseen are enough of a foundation for long-lasting matrimonial unions. In reality, this particularly chaotic season two only shattered every last vestige of faith I had in the institution of marriage altogether. Love is Blind season two is a sobering reminder of why we really need to fundamentally rethink marriage as this ultimate goalpost of validating love. I mean, just imagine any of these couples becoming actual parents, which many of the contestants do envision for themselves. Personally, I felt a full shiver go down my spine when rock band enthusiast Danielle quickly veered from defending her right to drunkenly break tables while dressed as a hot dog to fantasizing about all the children she wants to have with fiance Nick. I'm not one to usually make such pearl clutching pleas, but won't anybody think of the children? <laughs> It's not just Danielle either, though she does seem to answer the question of like, what if red flags were a whole person? But the majority of this season's cast make a strong case for why we may want to start issuing marriage licenses with at least as much scrutiny as a driver's license. I think I would sleep more soundly at night if a uh, couple's war required to pass some kind of emotional check-in before jumping into legal unions with such high likelihoods of uh, becoming toxic public safety hazards. Jokes aside, we're all works in progress, deserving of a loving partner who can help us on this never-ending journey to becoming better people. But no one's personal growth should become someone else's daily trauma. Even Yana and Jarrett, this season's golden couple that we're clearly supposed to be rooting for, seem pretty destined for unequal partnership. From the jump, Jarrett just fuckboys his way out of deserving even an ounce of Yana every chance he gets. And Mallory very publicly gives him such a chance, and she turns around and gaslights Sal into apologizing to her for it. Perhaps the most infuriating of them all, Shake spends 10 episodes finding every excuse while conveniently leaving out internalized racism for why he just doesn't think that Deep D is that attractive, even though she's literally a Disney princess come to life. There isn't enough time in the universe to unpack the vortex of damage between professional man-child Shane and his mommy-wife-to-be Natalie, yet somehow even their powder keg of a pairing is still the more stable timeline than the alternative, where Shane and Shayna are like the match made in hell that she believes former fiance Kyle is destined for as an atheist. Whew, it's just a lot of woof to go around. By the end, it feels like the only social experiment that could possibly end in success is Iyana and Deep D exploring if bisexuality is their thing so everyone else can go home and work on themselves. To be fair, ill-advised marriages aren't new to either Love is Blind or reality dating shows in general. It's entirely possible that season two hits different because we're different. Maybe the public's willingness to buy into reality TV fairy tale love stories can't survive the vibe shift of the two-year global pandemic we've just lived through since season one. Regardless, there are invaluable lessons to be learned from the disastrous unions of season two. Love certainly is not blind, and it also clearly isn't all that's needed for a healthy marriage. In fact, we should probably just stop measuring the success of a loving partnership through anything as outdated as marriage. 
What, what feels most off about season two of Love is Blind is exactly the same thing that's making shows like The Bachelor feel increasingly irrelevant. Producers can't just keep ignoring the reality that young people's values and priorities around romantic partnerships are drastically changing. Millennials may divorce rates plummet, yet commentators and researchers still insist on interpreting this as a negative outcome from their hesitancy to get married in the first place. Alternatively, maybe it's actually just that young people don't feel as beholden to the traditions of heteronormative patriarchal institutions they watched fail about 50% of the time in their own childhood homes. If any reality TV dating show is equipped to transition out of the forced matrimonial formula, it's Love is Blind, where marriage is indeed a choice rather than a compulsory fight to the death. Our only hope is that season three opens its eyes to all the other ways that it can break free from the status quo. <coughs> Make it gay. <laughs> Please. <laughs>